backstage at the art center. <laughs> it's a glamorous, it is a glamorous profession. <laughs> In the early days, the audience would have laughed. They couldn't stand it. They hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the critics vilified us to such a degree that we became famous. It was a great help. What you immediately notice about Philip is that his whole thing is so very family. This is very typical top of the piano. Shall I talk you through it a little bit? Every once in a while, I'll come in here like a madman and say, I can't find a page. <laughs> I think, well, of course you can't find a page. It's amazing you find anything in here. That was what Philip was like as a little boy. <laughs> Philip does existential dread better than anybody. I remember there was an issue about certain gongs. It's the ideal music for creating emotion. We just tried it in the mix and we all looked at each other and said, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> He has created a musical language that is the acoustic door to the unknown, like an ever-ascending score that never reached to the heavens. It's never been viewed that way by me. I'm just trying to write a piece of music and play it. Is it escape or is it liberation? I don't know. He is a perfect spiritual person. No matter how famous, how successful he might be, he's one person, just a Philip. Do you like big, chunky pieces of garlic? The kind that kind of explode in your mouth. <laughs> That's what you're getting. I never was a captive of other people's ideas about me. I've been like that my whole life, and it saved me a lot of trouble. Even when it came to writing music, I didn't care what people thought. You know, there's a lot of music in the world, you don't have to listen to mine. There's Mozart, there's the Beatles. Listen to something else. You don't have to listen to this. You have my blessings. Go on, listen to something else. I don't care. Knock, knock, who's there? 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 Knock, knock, fill glass. <laughs>